spring games. Actual football being played, 11-11 football being played this coming Saturday. Second buffet for us. We had a nice little buffet last weekend. Closest thing we're going to get to a fall Saturday with Georgia playing, Alabama playing. We got a nice little uh, nice little round of action here this upcoming Saturday. What are we watching? What should we be watching for as it uh, pertains to this upcoming spring Saturday? We got Texas playing some ball. The thing that I'm watching most closely with them, what does the chemistry look like between Quinn Ewers and those new transfer wide receivers, most specifically Isaiah Bond? Because Texas, when they were rolling last year, a lot of it was on the defense for sure, but I think also a big piece of what they did offensively last year was their playmakers on the outside just being the big dogs on whatever Saturday they chose. Xavier Worthy, and I Mitchell combined for darn near 2,000 yards receiving together. I don't think it needs to be a finished product in the spring, but the thing I'm watching here, completion percentage. Hey, where's that ball for Quinn Ewers when he throws it to Isaiah Bond? Is it on the, the correct shoulder? Do they have the proper timing down? Is that chemistry where it needs to be when it gets to the fall? It's just a jumping off point, but Texas made the college football playoff last year in large part because they threw the ball for almost 300 yards a game. Have to believe it was a lot closer to 300 yards a game when Quinn Ewers was healthy because he wasn't for the duration of the season. Scored 35 points a game. What's the chemistry look like in Austin? Excited to watch that. Speaking of quarterback play, man, Florida State, the DJU era, about to get underway in Tallahassee. I'm very curious how comfortable he looks in that new system. Because with Florida State, man, it's not a quarterback battle, from what I understand. It's not a thing where you're seeing if it's DJU or if it's somebody else. Like, DJU is going to be the guy for you. So we're taking a temperature here of how comfortable he is getting from, you know, first progression to second progression. Does he know where the check down is? Is he double clutching it? Is he taking a lot of sacks? Is he having to throw it away a lot? How comfortable is he operating within this system? If you're a Florida State fan, you'd like to see him have a day like Garrett Nussmeyer, where he makes good decisions, has no incompletions, goes to the right places with the football. That's the thing I'm watching for. It's not the end-all, be-all. If he goes out there and completes half his passes, we're not out on DJU. It just means it's still going to take a little bit more time for, uh, for him to get to the level he wants to operate at. But from what we're hearing out of camp in Tallahassee this entire spring is he's continued to trend upward and had a couple of strong scrimmages. So we'll see how that translates in the spring game. Different conversation at Michigan. At Florida State, you're rolling with DJU. At Michigan, right now, the betting favorite is probably Alex Orgy. What does he look like in the spring game? Because I think however Alex Orgy plays in the spring game, more than likely as a fan, dictates how you feel about the transfer portal. Like if Alex Orgy goes out there 10 for 10, 200 yards, two touchdowns, you're like, okay, think we got our guy. Or at the very least, you feel confident about rolling into game one with Alex Orgy. If he goes out there and kind of struggles to throw the football to the correct spot and he has a turnover or two, you're like, ah, it's good. I mean, you know, I think he's going to be okay for us long term. But like, is okay winning a national championship as we've come to expect here at Michigan? I'm excited to watch that. I'm really excited to see how Alex Orgy operates in the spring game because he's not going to be able to utilize one of the best parts of his game, which is him as a running threat which is massive, okay? So we're going to see him isolated as a passer, running this offense under Sharon Moore. It'll be exciting. We'll tell us a lot here about the uh, the aspirations for Michigan in that transfer portal quarterback market. USC, a team we've touched on a couple of times throughout this show. Defensively, it's a new era. And I've said this a couple of times on the show when we talk about defenses in the spring, man. Like, take what you want from the spring. Take what you want. Like, we got Ohio State thudding up with their good on goods. You know, like they're not trying to get anybody hurt during the spring. Um, so it's, it's tough to truly, really draw a great sample size with what they're going to bring to the table physically. But what I want to watch for USC is in this new scheme, are guys in position? And I don't mean in position pre-snap, though that's important too. I mean like when there's a play to be made, do we have somebody there to make that competitive play on the football? If you don't come down with it, that's ball, man. Like it's... It's a competitor's game, but are you at least in position? Because there were multiple times last year for USC where they were superior personnel-wise, but they just were fitting things incorrectly. They were just a couple steps behind on certain plays, and it just it kind of it just it rubs you the wrong way if you're a defensive juggernaut, or excuse me, if you're a defensive fan of, of football, but even more so if you're a USC fan, you're like, we got better guys. We got more four-stars than them. And not to dog Arizona State, but Arizona State comes to my mind specifically like USC has better roster talent than Arizona State. 
and continually they had guys that were out of position. Are they in position in this new defense? Because we've said it multiple times now, if USC can just be serviceable defensively, we'll see what USC is offensively this year. But if Lincoln Riley's running the show, you feel pretty confident about the way that thing's headed. Are they in position? And then also in the spring game, it'd be a bonus if you could see guys tackle well. If there's some missed tackles, you don't, you know, pound the alarm necessarily, but I think you would like to see some guys get taken to the ground, effectively be in position. We're checking the pulse there defensively for USC. Notre Dame offensively, no Riley Leonard. So we're not going to get to see the uh, the finished product of what they are this year. Um, obviously in the spring game, you're not seeing the finished product regardless. How explosive do they look offensively? And I don't need to have multiple touchdowns of 50 yards or more but Notre Dame has gone to the portal and upgraded how dynamic they're going to be at receiver. And they also brought in an offensive coordinator, Mike Denbrock, who led one of the most potent offenses in the country last year. Last year, Notre Dame, as, as they were pretty good for yards per pass, a lot of that, I have to believe, was off of the play action and getting the looks they wanted. They averaged 239 pass yards a game. I believe that's in the bottom third of the entire country. Not bad. It's who they were last year. They were kind of more ground and pound, a little more pro style. I think they'll open it up a little bit more this year. Do we just have some more opportunities for separation? Even if I don't see it in the spring game where we're having, like I just said, those long touchdown passes and long touchdowns, period, do we see guys separate? Are the big plays there from what we can gauge? What's the overall tempo of that offense? That'll be a lot of fun to see. Last thing here I'm watching, Texas A&M, the fighting Billy Lucci's. What do they look like operationally? This first time out for Mike Elko and company. Because, I mean, we, we've uh, we've had this discussion together a few times if you've tuned into this show. Like, A&M doesn't have a, a roster problem. Like, they're not trying to hit the portal super hard this upcoming spring, and they're not going to try and retool the whole roster. I'm sure they'll take some guys if they find the right fit. But A&M has good enough ingredients to be competitive in the SEC. Just the fact of the matter. Do they look like they are a more structured operation? And... It's the spring game, so take of this as you'd like. I'm looking for turnovers. I'm looking for assignments being taken care of defensively, like no busted coverages, no messed up run fits. And perhaps most importantly, the most obvious example of a disciplined and structured team is what you do from a penalties perspective. Last year, Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, Texas A&M, excuse me, they'll play Notre Dame early, 80th in the country in terms of penalties per game. I'm not telling you that's a direct correlation to what the staff was doing or wasn't doing, but I think with a new staff, there will be a heavy emphasis on discipline, doing things the right way, and curious to see how that translates in the spring game. So tune in Sunday morning. We're going to have a ton of coverage for you. Okay, so all these teams I just mentioned, we will have an instant reaction from their spring game on this channel on Sunday morning. So subscribe so you don't miss it and come back and hang out with us uh, for our Sunday sprint. I want to tell you all about the good folks bringing you the show today, the good people at Factor Meals, delicious, ready-to-eat meals. And I understand now we're in April. A lot of us started the year now with the New Year's resolution of, hey, let's be a little bit healthier. Hey, I want to drop my 5 to 10 pounds. Hey, maybe I want to put on 5 to 10 pounds of lean muscle. Whatever goals you had to start the new year, a lot of it probably had to do with your dietary uh, habits. Factor Meals helps us get that done. They got options on options. 35 different options a week from keto to vegan to calorie smart. Factor Meals got you covered. We say this a lot on this show, man. Flexibility is one of your best abilities, okay? Availability, flexibility, but you got both with Factor Meals. Get as much or as little as you need. Could be six meals, could be 18 meals. You can pause it as well whenever you want to, okay? Or reschedule deliveries any single anytime you would like to. No prep required. Gets to your door, 100% ready to heat up. So go to factormeals.com slash JD50 and use JD50 as your code to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box when your subscription is active. That's code JD50 at factormeals.com slash JD50. 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box as long as your subscription is active. Appreciate the good folks at Factor Meals taking care of us, taking care of y'all. Roll party roll. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.